So the topic for this video is moments in two dimensions and we'll illustrate this by means of a problem. So we've got an exam question here which says a uniform rod AB has weight 20 newtons and length 3 meters. The end A is freely hinged to a point on a vertical wall and we can see the hinge there. The rod is held horizontally and in equilibrium by a light inextensible string which is this here. One end of the string is attached to the rod at B. The other end of the string is attached to a point C, which is one meter directly above A. Calculate the tension in the string. Now, the first thing I notice about the problem like this is that I don't know this angle here. But actually, this angle is pretty straightforward to work out because we've got an opposite and an adjacent side. So here, we know that tan theta equals opposite over adjacent. So if we now work out the hypotenuse, so the hypotenuse is root of 3 squared plus 1 squared equals root 10. So now we can work out sine theta, which is opposite of the hypotenuse, so 1 over root 10. And we can work out cos theta, which is adjacent of the hypotenuse, which is 3 over root 10. So we've got all of tan theta, sine theta, and cos theta now. We could also work out the angle of theta and use that, which is also fine, but we'll keep it exact for now. So now let's take this diagram and elaborate on it. We'll draw all the forces on. So it's always good to draw a diagram. I'm just going to take a copy here and draw big enough to draw all the forces on. So we know the rod is uniform and has weight 20 newtons. Well, uniform means the center of mass is at the middle of the rod. So, the weight acts downwards like that, and it's 20 newtons, not 20 g, because we're already given the weight. We also know that the tension here is holding up the rod. So T for tension. And a non-obvious force acting on the rod is at the hinge here. And the hinge is holding the rod into the wall and holding it up. Now what I've just said might or might not be true. However, if I am wrong, then I'll get a negative value for Y, which actually tells me that Y is pulling the rod down. And if I'm wrong about which direction X is acting in, i.e. if X is actually pushing the rod out of the wall, then I'll simply get a negative value for X. So it's fair game to just guess which direction these two forces are in. And if I'm wrong, I'll get negative numbers and they'll be acting in the other direction. Simple as that. So don't be shy to guess. Right, so the question has asked us to calculate the tension in the string. So we're going to do that by taking moments about a point. Now the point that it makes the most sense to take moments about is point A. Because we're taking about point A, we get to ignore these X and Y forces. We get to ignore two unknowns. And in this context, it makes sense to be able to eliminate unknowns. So remember that moment equals force times distance. But I should really elaborate because not just any old distance. It's the distance from pivot perpendicular to line of action of force. Now let's go through what I mean by that. So let's take this force here, quite an easy one. So the line of action of the force is down this line here, this red dotted line that I've made. So the perpendicular distance to the pivot is along the bar. So we can see that that's a distance of 1.5 meters halfway down the bar. So if I take a moment about A, and that's what this symbol denotes, take moments about A, and that arrow indicates that clockwise I'm gonna consider it to be positive. Well, actually this force, if it is my pivot, is going to turn the bar clockwise. So that's a positive moment. 
So I've got the force, which is 20, times the perpendicular distance from the pivot, which is 1.5. Then we've got this tension force here, which is turning it anti-clockwise. So take, and this for me is the complicated part. So this red dotted line here is the line of action of the force. And we want the perpendicular distance to the pivot, which is this distance here, one that makes a right angle. However, that's a bit difficult to visualize. It's a bit difficult to do. So we're gonna do something different here. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna delete these red dotted lines here. Instead, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna resolve tension and look at its components perpendicular and parallel through the bar. So I can see this one here, this component of tension is the adjacent of the force triangle. So that one's gonna be T cos theta. Here, that leaves this one to be T sine theta. So rather than looking at perpendicular distance, what I've done is I've resolved the force perpendicular to and parallel to the bar. Now this one parallel to the bar, acting towards or into the pivot, this one isn't going to have a turning effect. The only one that's going to have the turning effect is the perpendicular component. And the reason I've done this is because now I'm considering this to be the line of action of the force, vertical. So the perpendicular distance is more obvious. It's three meters. So that becomes take away T sine theta times three meters equals zero. So it's an equilibrium, so all moments sum to zero. Well, that now implies that 30 take 3t, we found that sine theta earlier was one over root 10, so 3t over root 10 equals zero, which means that 3t over root 10 equals 30. And put that in the calculator 30 divided by 3 over root 10 equals 10 root 10 so that means that t equals 10 root 10 newtons which is approximately equal to 31.62 newtons and that's what we were asked to find so just a bit of a recap, the key thing to take away from this video is that when taking moments, we can decide to look at the line of action of a force and then the perpendicular distance directly to the pivot. But if that's too complicated, like it was when trying to find the turning, for, turning effect of this, uh, of this tension, we can resolve the tension perpendicular to and parallel to the line directly to the pivot and use the distance perpendicular this way so at th this time the line of action of the force is directly up in effect therefore the distance directly at the pivot is three meters so that's why we did t sine theta which is the vertical component times three for more videos like this subscribe to our youtube channel and to find out more about our skype tuition and revision courses go to a